My name is Shafiq, and today I'm going to be talking to you about MVC. It's a design pattern called Model View Controller. Um, it's something that we touched up in junior phase about very briefly, um, but I don't think we spent enough time on it, so I kind of want to bring it up again and kind of clear up any confusion there is about it, hopefully. Um, today I really want to go over a few things with MVC, kind of like what it is, how MVC works, um, the different examples with MVC, and kind of like how you can use a design pattern with Angular, which is similar to MVC, but it's not really. It's something called MVVM, which stands for Model View View Model, um, and kind of some use cases of that and examples of that. So let's get started. So what is MVC? Um, MVC stands for Model View Controller. It's a design pattern or a software architecture um, that's really popular. Uh, a lot of languages like Swift, um, I think Ruby, um, Java, um, yeah, there's a lot of languages that use it. Um, the reason a lot of people use it is because it promotes code usability and it implements the separation of concern. Um, so MVC has three different parts. Um, it kind of breaks, up, breaks apart all of your code into these three different main parts. You have your controller, which is like if you had like a, like a, like a, if you had like a office or something, your controller would be like the boss. Then you have like your view, which is like would be like the receptionist, like everything front end, kind of like all your HTML, your CSS, anything the user really interacts with as far as code. Um, and then you have your model, which is just raw data, which is kind of like your objects that get stored, um, kind of any kind of data storage, things like that. Also, MVC, MVC is not like it's not the actual code you write. It's actually kind of like a principle that you follow when you're writing code. Um, and I think that's a really important part. So an example of the MVC pattern is right here. Am I good? Okay. Um, so, you, so, you, you, so you have your view, which is like your web page, or maybe you're at your phone. Um, and then the user interacts with your application through, through that front end like screen, really. Um, so let, let's say you press a button. Whenever you press that button, that button takes an action and goes to the controller. The controller does some logic, and then it sends any information to the model to update that model. And then the model takes that information, sends it back to the controller, and then the controller sends it back to the view. The controller is really a middleman in this kind of flow between the view and the model. And it's really important to understand that the view and the model never talk to each other. It always goes through the controller. And the controller in an MVC model never really holds any data. It does some kind of like function and hold it temporarily and then send it off to the model f to store it in the model and then the model will send back saying hey I've been, I've been updated you know send this updated value back to the view um, so a really popular language that uses MVC is Swift which I'm sure a lot of us know from having iPhones it's the Apple uh, language of choice um, and I guess everyone knows of Flappy, uh, not Flappy Bird, Angry Birds. Um, so an example of MEC here would be like all of like the images of like the birds, the pigs, the boxes, all of that is kind of your model. It's really all that backend data. Um, also like the score, um, how many birds you have left, all that stuff is just stored in the model. Every, anytime you interact with the screen, kind of what you see on the screen and what you play with would be your view and then Anything that has to do with the function of the game, the actual function as in um, like birds flying, things breaking, um, things rebuilding, things like that, that would be part of the controller. Um, yeah. So just to wrap up, not really wrap up, but kind of sum up the MVC key points. So you have your model, which is really like a set of classes that describe the business and the data logic. Um, and then you have your view, which represents kind of what, what I said earlier. It's the UI components, kind of the CSS, jQuery, and the HTML, everything that the user really interacts with. And then you have your controller, which is responsible no, to, process in, to process incoming requests. Um, it receives an input from the user via the view and then process the, processes the user's data with the help of the model and passing the result back to the view. Um, and again, this is really useful when you want to kind of separate out your code into three different components and make it really clean. Cool. Uh, so now I kind of want to switch gears and talk about the Angular design pattern, which is really similar to MVC, 
Um, and a lot of times it's really confused. Angular is being confused as an MVC design pattern when it's really not. Um, Angular uses something called MVVM, which stands for Model View View Model. Um, the model and the view in Angular are very similar to how they are in MVC. The only difference is, is the view model part, which kind of allows for two-way data binding. And the view model here would be kind of like, as we know, Angular would be your dollar sign scope, which allows for that two-way data binding um, from the view to the model, and then from the model to the view, um, with the view model in the middle of it. Um, here's kind of the code flow for your MVVM design pattern. So you have your user, which interacts with the view. Um, and then from the view, you go to the view model. And then from the view model, you go to the model. And then kind of back the same way, you go from the model to the view model, and from the view model to the view. Um, yeah. So here's an example of MVVM being used in uh, Angular code. Here on your front end, you see you have like two input fields. Um, both take numbers. They have an ng model on them. And then you have a result label that kind of updates the, uh, the, uh, the result of those two inputs when they're divided together. On the bottom, you can see you have some JavaScript running, some Angular code running. Um, and that's your controller part. It kind of just does the actual the function and then sends it off to the data. Uh, this is just kind of a broken up version of that. Um, first, we start with the view. We have an one input box, you would have six. The second input box, you would have three. Um, and the result would start off at zero. And then, you, and then as soon as you input that, that gets fired off. And then it goes into your view model, which fires off that function and sends that data back to the model. And then it updates the model. As you can see at the very last line, you have your scope.data, which gets change from 0, 0, 0 to like 6, 3, and 2. And then that data gets sent back to the view model, which then gets updated on the view, which is live. Uh, some key points about MVVM. Um, again, it interacts with the user, or the user interacts with the view. Um, there's a one-to-many relationship between the view and the view model, where you have multiple views per view model. And it also supports two-way uh, data binding between the view and the view model. Here's some resources that I found useful. Um, they kind of go over just different examples of MVC and kind of when it's used. And they also tell you the difference between MVC and MVVM um, when it comes to Angular. So, thank you. Any questions? <laughs>